Hey, welcome back. Hey, all gone. We're heading off to Yanchip National Park today. Uh, me and Jack, we're ready to go, all packed up, sorted out. We're gonna go and check out Crystal Cave, uh, check out the lake and all the surroundings out there. I've heard it's absolutely beautiful. Hope you can come along and join us. Uh, let's hit the road. National Park, just doing the entrance. Nice, beautiful, clear day. Sun's out. Jack's ready. You ready, Jack? Yeah, yeah he's ready. Go get check out the cave. Yeah, what do you reckon, buddy? Go check out the cave. Okay. Cave. This is the closest cave to Perth. There are some really nice ones down south, down the Margaret River region. Um, not sure where you go to visit entry fees apply. Koala's cave tours. Okay. Okay, visitor center, lake view. Ooh, we got a bit of stuff here, Jack, that we can check out, buddy. We're out. See if Jack's ready to go. You want to go and see an adventure? Go see some caves? <laughs> oh, here we go. Down, down. Into the cave. and 20 Celsius all year round. Yeah, this is a great place to work for this before you until you walk out. Now, a little history about the cave. This one was discovered in 1903 by a robber named Ernest. 
Henry Watson is not cool. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, careful. Watch your step. Come on, buddy. And Tara. So there's Henry right in the middle. Actually, if you're up at the shop, you might have seen him sitting on the fireplace. Not the wood, like this one or this. Off the top of the cage. Come on. All he had was a tiny little carbon light. Now she'll light all the cages. That light's going out. It's left. Actually, you know, so they're caught in water, this lady in the white dress probably wouldn't look so pretty with the camera. Now, a little bit about the actual limestone itself. It's what we call Tamanol limestone. Now, the easiest way to explain it, think of it like an old sand dune. Yeah, the shells, the coral, the pink you can wash up on the beach. It's broken down on tiny little particles, what they call calcium carbonate. That sinks to the sand with the weight of the sand compressed into the water. Similar to sand, what we're standing in that is marine life. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Now, this limestone is really young. It's only 600,000 years old. Yeah, it's the young stuff. So look on kids' faces when I tell them that's young. Now, formation of the cave starts with rain, rain is falling, and the rest of the third year, too. Now, we've got a front from the other. Hold that hand. 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 Hold You can go in front. If you're small, this is where you. Oh, look at that. Okay. To your left. How are we doing there? Yeah, good. Wait up, bud. Yeah, I know that's a little bit low. Stand up. Not as low as that little hole on the corner. That's there's the original entrance. Like I said, water used to flow through there, so they call it through that water. That water flows down here, right around here, just up here. Now you can see we've got some water in there. Some water in that water. Some water in that water. In 40 years ago, we used to be able to there's a bunch of groundwater. Now we use that. We came up with some pine trees, some farmers, some markets, the residents. Our water table has dropped maybe two to four feet below us. Yeah. We have to pump that water in for the little pseudo scorpions and the cockroaches, the rodents, the trucklobites, and the decay system. Of course, we won't see any because as soon as we turn the lights on, they disappear. In fact, the only way we can tell is that little sand area around the edge. We'll move it off and we'll the water from the water here to the edge. Now, when that water was natural and it flowed into this little area oh, here, wow. you guys notice the tree roots. Come again. <laughs> yeah, this is somewhat of a tulip. Well, the fancy word eucalyptus of Cucatia. Took ages to discover. That would spread out in this little area, what's called a root nest. These tiny little hairs on the root spread out like a big nest. In that, these straws will block up. They get a little bit of dirt, a little bit of particles, so the water will come on the outside. Great new ones everybody knows. The stalactites. The nice big ones. Now, when the drop comes off the end of land on the ground, it'll start to rise up, creating a stellic mite. Now, in a stellic mite and a stellic pipe, unite, it'll create a column. See the thing up there? One from the top, one from the bottom, that's going to pick up one. Or if a drop rolls down the angle of a roof, another drop will continue on that path, creating what we call shawls or curtains. All the kids with really good imagination have like elephant ears or bat wings. <laughs> if it flies over the surface, create this, what we call flow stone. Now the water comes over the top of the left to go to the Now in the early days, people used to get up there and have photos. You know, do the little peace signs and pull, no touching. No, no touching, <laughs> Jack. You know, explain why. See, in the early days, people used to get up and have photos, do the peace yeah. signs, stuck in it. You know, talking about those oils in the hands. That is what the stone used to look like. Beautiful and green as any of those on the roof. Oh. That grain is that you see on there because the water was flying over the outside of 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 the
Are you ready? Come on, bud. You ready to come down? Let's go. Shall we? Let's go. One, two, three. Hang on to the handrail. Hang on to the handrail. You ready? Come on, this way. Follow the man. Come on. Come on. You can go. Quick. Oh, yeah, the light. Oh, look. Oh, oh. Actually, can you see all the little tracks? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, let's go for the naughty person here. Hey, Jack. Jack, on there. Now, the water is only about... Oh, oh yeah, we can't go on there. Oh, no, mate, stay here. And the water's only about 50 centimetres deep, just enough to give them a drink. Yeah? Come on. Look at the reflection, isn't that beautiful? You see those ones up there? You see those ones? What are those ones? And then, oh, look, we're going to go for a walk around there. Huh? Going to walk around there. Come on. Careful, slow down. Because of the water hanging on the ceiling. And just over here, that little spark of green cave. Now, it's almost all lamp and flora. That's not originally coming up from the cave. See, the early light systems, not only were they bright, they let off quite a bit of heat. Come on. For about two seconds. As soon as you got to stand still, it's all over. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Come on, buddy. Up here. Yeah, this is what we call sermon on the mountain. Okay. I can do a shadow at the back when I do school groups and tell kids that's me listening. Uh, as explained before, traditionally. He's going to try and climb through there. Yeah, uh, traditionally we didn't come into caves. We believed in what's called a jig tap. He lived in the dark. In fact, Aboriginal people never travel at night. Is it pretty? Is it very pretty? Yeah, it's nice in there. We went in there, didn't we? What did we see in there? Ducky. Ducky. Yeah, the duckies go in the water. Okay. Let me go through. Make it better. Oh, look up there. Look at that one. Is there a ducky up there? Is there duckies? That's pretty pretty, isn't it, Jack? How cool is this, buddy? Oh, watch out, it's shallow. Oh, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to go down. Watch your step. I got gotcha. you, Dad's here. Come on, buddy. Come up and see the ducky. Ducky. The other reason is what you can see in the water. Is that part? Oh, yeah. Yeah, slowly start to form. Hmm. Uh, this is what we call wishful thinking. We're hoping if that little root mac gets really thick, maybe that little crustacean will come back. I mean, it's, it's unlikely this isn't the right water, hasn't been filtered by the hills, it's from rain tank, but we do know our animals can adapt. The carnivy, the black cockatoo, one of our endangered birds now feeds on pine trees. If he can adapt to a different food source, I can adapt to Chinese. Ducky! Is that a ducky up there? Oh, see the yellow sand? You know the bricky sand? Yeah, that's why a lot of the crystals have that yellow thing still. And that, don't you reckon that looks like a Chinese? Very well. How good is this, Jack? Yeah. Yeah. 
Careful step. You alright? You want dad to take you? Okay, down the steps. Doing well. Look at that one. Look at that one, boys. Wow. Whoa. The duckies like that one. Duck, duck. What's that? <laughs> Get that! Yeah! Wow, look at this one, buddy. How cool is this? Oh, there's a duck. 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 They show you where he came from. He went in, they would be able to get him. But while he was in there, he actually snapped one of the crystals off the roof. Comes out, shows it to the guys, don't draw the truth on the detail. He's on record of officially being the first guy to vandalise a cable in Western Australia. Now, of course, he's got roads named after him, road highway, he's got all he's got a lot of guys. So I guess with that in mind, they're sure. Now, if you get an opportunity, actually, when you're driving down, the last time I got to go on the right, you can see the road. Go walk? Go walk. 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 Go the jokes get worse. Have a wonderful day. Ciao. Au revoir. Hasta la vista. Remember that you say hello. Namaste. Into now. Put away your nose. In hippie. Yes, out. Yeah. Yeah. Check when you walk out. Oh, we're going up. Put my glasses to it. Yep. We're going up, buddy. It's better than television, isn't it? That's good. <laughs> They'll all be on computer games one day, so. Uh, it's not going to get it to grab like me. Out in the bush. Right out. Right here, buddy. How was that? Want to come through here? Have a look. Look at the walls. Well, was that good? Yeah? Okay. Come on, Jack. Here we go. We're going to go down into the Duerto Mia Trail. It's just an open cave area. Went into the cave. Uh, Boomerang Gorge, that's what it's called. Just waiting for my little partner in crime, Jack, to come. Bloody oh. Yeah, the guy was talking about how the lack of rainwater and water coming through um, is really affecting the caves. Um, a lot of the the life that lives in the cave as normal is, um, yeah, it's disappearing because the water's gone and there's not water you can replace. Obviously, it takes a lot of time for that rainwater to seep through and then fill up a cave. So, yeah, it's very tricky to sort of just replace that with normal water. So, yeah, some like little, little, I guess, look like prawn looking creatures have disappeared and they can't find them. So, they're hopeful, hopeful to try and do it, but. It's very tricky when we're using so much water, but it was very cool. House of the wild dogs. Too 
not enter. Take a quick look up. See the difference. Once that moisture in there, the outside air comes in, it just destroys the cave. My apprentice here. What do you reckon, Jack? You going around? How pretty is this, buddy? Come on. Come on, Jack. So you know, you see there the amphibioid, amphibipod. That's the one that was. That's the one that guy, the tour guide Jack was saying that he no longer lived there because there was no water. It's gone. Gone. Shoo. Yeah. Yeah. What's in there? Ah, oh, it's like an apartment building, isn't it? How pretty is this, Jack? All good? All good, buddy? Happy? Yeah. Good work, Champo. Yeah, there's plenty of walks around Yanchip um, that you can come and do. Um, obviously, like this one, this, is, this one will lead where Jack is, back up through there, all the way up to the main Crystal Cave where you can do a tour. Uh, I think it's only twice a day, so be aware of that. I nearly missed it. It's 10 o'clock and 1 o'clock. Um, so, yeah, just be aware about that. They're open every, it is open every day, though, so that's including weekends. But very peaceful considering it's like uh it's about 40 minutes from center of perth so up north so if you're you're already up north um it's definitely not too far but if you're traveling if you're here on holidays uh, and you've got a hire car it's really not that long to uh drive and there's a there's, there's a big lake which we're going to go to and have a look at next um so with the big grass areas, there's barbecues. There's actually a camping area I've seen as well. So I think you can actually camp here. So there's actually probably not for Jack's size. He's, he's enjoying that. He didn't really enjoy the cave. Um, it was a little bit, because you can't touch anything. So that was a little bit tricky for him. But um, in regards to everything else, it's pretty nice. Just to get the kids out in the bush. Hey buddy, is it good? My assistant, my camera assistant. And I guess if you're into, uh, if you're bird watching or nature and you want to get some really nice photos, some really amazing things, uh, footage, you can definitely get some lovely photos here, some great formations um, as well. So it's very hard to knock it back.
don't know if you can hear the birds in the trees it's there if you just need a day where you want to switch off as well after a busy day working and you just want to come and just just come and just be at peace um yeah for how close it is it's pretty pretty awesome come on assistant come on you're coming let's go He gets paid in bananas and biscuits. Very cheap, but he's a good, good helper. Aren't ya? Good helper, buddy. Get the bag, quick. <laughs> Good boy, come on buddy. Yeah, we're off. We're gonna go up the stairs. There's some stairs around here. Yeah, do you wanna go up the stairs? Stairs. Hang on. I'm taking this then. You keep dropping my lens. How are you doing? Giddy ups? No. Okay, I held it. That's fair enough. You did well. You carried it for dad for a long time. Come on, buddy. Stairs, buddy. The stairs. Come, bud. Okay. Come on, Champo. Hey. <laughs> G'day, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, good. It's a nice day, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Stairs, your favourite. Here you go. Look at that. Yes, look, you want to go climb them? Good boy.
nicely done area. So this is part of Yantip as well. They've got a koala enclosure, and then that's right down on the lake next to the inn. So it's a beautiful big area. It's got lots to do, ovals. Um, there's a zip line area for kids as well, which we didn't go and do. Jack's a bit young for that, but yeah, there's lots to see and do. Yeah, let's see if you, you can keep your eye out for some koalas. Jack, can you see any koalas? Watch your step. Good stepping. Here you come, buddy, out the way. See any koalas? Oh, there's some koalas, look. See the koalas? Come on, buddy. G'day. Yeah, yeah good thanks. See the koala Jack? He's sleeping. Up the top here. I don't know if you can see that. Up the top there. Koala sleeping. There's a couple actually. I've seen a couple. No one, there's no one in the next tree over as well. Hey Jack. How good is a koala bud? Yeah, there's a few koalas here. Pretty cool. There's another one up the tree. Oh, there's one over that side. You can see him over there. So yeah, the koalas are pretty cool. Um, there's, uh, there's at least three of them there that you can see. And they've obviously just in this little little areas they've got them it's all all cleaned up ready for them Shop. truck jack's favorite thing the truck how good's that buddy it's a great little area they've done here it's pretty awesome a little bit of wilderness for them with some eucalypt natural eucalyptus Obviously, like a feeding area, they come down to feed them. It's a great little area for them. And something I didn't even know about that was here, so that's pretty cool. This way, bud. Pretty cool, they've got, it's a pretty big area, I guess. Probably not as much as they used to. But it's, it's safe and sound and protected. Um, yeah, they seem pretty happy there, up there sleeping. Some nice big old trees for them to go and snooze in. And then we're gonna go down, this, this is gonna take us down to the Antip Lake. This area, just get away from my trusty assistant. Okay, this is down to the Antip Lake, again. I uh, want to come down with the family, barbecues, the kids, and just have a picnic. Uh, it's obviously a beautiful place, which, yeah, until now, I've been in, been in Perth 10 years and didn't even know about it. So, yeah, pretty awesome. Pretty cool spot, and only 40 minutes drive, which is stuff all nowadays. Um, and current cars are really not that far. Jack's going to sleep all the way home, I know that, so that'll be good. Tons of bird life, so that's a really good sign that it's whatever they're doing here is working. Yeah, lovely park areas. Looks fantastic. Come on, duck ducks. And heaps of room too. Like um, sometimes there's no, no space, but it does look like that here. Plenty of space. And the water goes up.
How cool is that? Bumpsy. Ducky. So this is Yanchip Lake. This is it. A beautiful place. Heaps of wildlife. Super, super peaceful. Great place to come and read a book, switch off, and sit down, write a book. Got some work to do, bring your laptop down on the desk. Plenty of places to thing, there's shops, there's food, there's toilets. It's pretty much everything. So anyway, that's us for the day. Uh, we've done the Yanchip, we did the cave, Crystal Cave, uh, did a little walk through the um, the old cave that had collapsed through the cavern. That was pretty cool. And done some other stuff. Jack's got to see lots of ducks. He's had fun. What do you reckon, buddy? Time to go home? Home time? Say, see you, everyone. Gia. 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 Righto, that's us from us. We're going home. Let's go, buddy. <laughs>
something I've never... Oh, there's some kangaroos on the side there, Jack. Is it kangaroos? Things the heads up. Uh, if you are coming to see Crystal Cave, um, you do need to buy the tickets from the main admin building. So that's... Uh, just make sure you give yourself about another 15 minutes to actually drive to the Crystal Cave. You can walk from that area, but you probably need half an hour or so or 45 minutes to walk over. So yeah, just do be um, aware of that. It's not, um, you can't get your tickets exactly from the Crystal Cave. And there's, it'll see, it sounds like there's only a couple of times a day that you can um, <coughs> do the cave tour. Now the cave tour is done by uh, a local Aboriginal tribe, uh, one of the Noongas. Um, and he was a really nice guy. Um, he kept going. Uh, Jack had a little, couple of little tantrums, but um, he kept going. He was really nice, really knowledgeable, um, really good understanding of, of the local area and that. So, yeah, it was really cool. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't get as many photos as I could because I uh, had Jack there, but uh, hopefully some of the video will come out. It was, uh, it was really pretty. There are a lot of caves you can go down south of Perth. Um, they're probably three, four hours plus drive. Um, there's some great ones down past Marga River, but for this is the closest one next to Perth and super accessible and really easy and so much more to do. It's not just not just turning up for a cave. You can come in and see so much more else. Anyway, that's us. Let's go home.